making life worth living and retirement worth having literally is about the people in our lives. But having a living is based on our employment. It's based on what we do with our skill sets, our talents, our soul, every moment of the day that we're not at home with our loved ones. So when we're talking about making a life worth living, we're really talking about making a living. And making a living comes from being employed or owning a business. So when we're talking about things that are important to making a living, that we're talking about things in people's lives, we're looking at literally what happens when someone loses a job. You see, in order to understand poverty, in order to understand homelessness, in order to understand difficulties families face, we have to look at what provides for them the resources for their lives. It's wonderful if we're going to add additional tax credits or additional money to people who have children, but what about the single person? What about that single individual who's sort of timed out of most job opportunities because the recruiters are of a certain age demographic looking for affinities with who they literally allow to go through that process of getting to an HR manager or a hiring manager? And maybe, just maybe, we're not really getting through technology at all. So what happens to that person is that in a few months time or in a year's time, depending on how much money they've literally got in the bank, they lose their life. They lose their life to poverty where they can't pay bills and homelessness. Now, how do we solve this? Do we just hand over money? Yes, in some cases we can, but we have to be willing to hand over money in a logical way. If someone is missing the ability to pay for their $50 mailbox and post office box, then we give them $50. If they're struggling to produce a life for themselves by getting employment, then they have to go in business for themselves. And we help them to build a business. And we practically find mentors and other resources to help them get on their feet, get the right training, and move forward. You see, most of the problems with the homeless programs and homeless initiatives, I can tell you from talking with the executive director of the Good Samaritan Network in Indiana, or at least in Hamilton County, that what she's discovered is that most people cannot grasp homelessness because they've never been in a situation that made them homeless. If they were in college and they didn't have a job, they stayed at home with their family until they got one and moved out on their own, right? Or they had roommates to cut the costs and expenses and they worked part-time jobs until they got into the right full-time position. Most people can do that if they have connections and if they have liaisons and if they have networks to allow them to do that. But as people get into midlife, as people get into late life, they're facing the truth that their bodies are literally slowly de de uh, declassifying or uh, decelerating. And I'm totally missing the word I'm looking for here, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Deteriorating is sort of a harsh word, but in essence, it's literally a physical ailment that's starting to impede on their ability to be productive, the ability for their minds to work, ability for their hearts to keep working well as well. And they're not as productive as they were when they were youthful. Now, companies sort of know that, so they tend to hire the youthful folks who've just gotten out of school, who've got later technology and capabilities or faster technology understanding. And the reality is that's not always true either. But in life, when we're trying to make a living and someone is violently attacking us and interfering with our rights, that's a real problem. Now, when I say this, do you mean it doesn't make sense to you? Not exactly. Here's what I mean. That literally a person who loses their job has to go through a lengthy process to find another one because there are no resource networks of social groups that are prepared to help that person get back on their feet. You see, we need social networks of people who know people who automatically understand that the reason that the person is reaching out to that group is that they need a job. And those people literally comb the earth through their social networks, both in their community and outside their community or outside their state to help that individual become all they can be. This is how you improve poverty situations. You find out what skills and talents do they have that can be employed right now. You find out what skills and talents they need to find out what they need training in. And then you figure out how do we pay for that training? Is there a donation platform for churches and other large organizations of traditional social networks where there's a lot of people already employed or already working in their own business practices? You see, a lot of companies could grow, but they're not willing to grow out of fear. A 
lot of companies could employ someone who didn't have a job, but they don't think about setting aside funds for that. We have a lot of time in life to produce a, an income is not exactly true. When we're job hunting and we're putting our information online in applications, we're literally sending our private information, including our name, address, social security number sometimes, and phone numbers to total strangers that we've never met before in our life, and we're trusting that they're not stealing our identities. And we're trusting that the technology works, and we're actually getting through to them. But what if it doesn't? You see, homelessness and poverty is a result of a lack of technology and a lack of social networks, not always a lack of funds. That is a byproduct of a lack of employment. So in order to improve poverty and improve situations like that, we have to have large companies like Hilton and others who know how to employ people, who have lots of jobs available, and are always looking for loyal staff to do the work. We also have other mega stars who know lots of people and can literally say, hey, this dude in this state needs a job. Can, does anyone have one for him that will help him really have a life worth living and retirement worth having? You see, it only takes one person to change a life. It only takes one person to muck up a life, especially if they're not that person whose life's getting mucked up. We have to produce film. We have to produce theories. We have to produce strategy. We have to produce action plans that make sense to the individual soul. The reason that poverty exists in affluent communities is usually because those in the affluent and influential parts of their life and stages of their life have never felt the poverty of being underemployed. They've never felt what it's like to lose a job may not be true, but maybe they were able to get a job quicker because they had a social network that allowed it. Or maybe that professional context still in play from good old relationships that allowed them to network and jump frog, leapfrog right into a position that fits them. You see, the way we battle poverty is really about who somebody knows. And if they don't know those people, then it's about whether or not we're willing and able to introduce them to other people in life to change the direction of the course of their life from a spiral down into poverty and homelessness to a launch up into employment, creativity, loyalty, and a productive wage. This has been Blake Jensen of Blaze Communications talking logically about poverty, that all poverty is is someone who hasn't got the right employment. And openly, we have to produce better educational training programs. We have to provide assistance in paying for some of those we have to match the person's skills, talents, and soul with their career options in front of them. Thanks for listening.